Christian greetings to all his darn families and friends around the world. More than ever before, we are convinced that we are living in a time of the end. Climatic disasters and pandemic pestilences are becoming more and more common and are telling us that Jesus is soon to come. How are we preparing for that great coming event? Consequently, in these perilous times, we need to have a very strong family relationship so that our families will radiate a beacon of hope to the church as well as to the community where we are living. Satan is working so hard to destroy the heart of the church, which is the family. He is targeting his attacks especially on God's chosen people to destroy the very core of family relationships. First, he is trying to cut the sacred core that binds both the husband and wife. He is bringing marital problems, financial problems, health problems that will provoke animosity and eventually will cause separation and divorce. More than this, Satan is also insinuating our children and young people to be more disobedient to their parents. Oh, how sad it is when the family unit is totally destroyed by Satan. You know, my beloved friends, our only safety is to bring our family to the feet of our Lord Jesus Christ and our Savior. Actually, the three pronouns in general, me, she, and he, must be reversed to have a perfect relationship in the home. That is to say that he who is Jesus Christ must be the first, and she that is the spouse will be the second, and me will be the last. It is the only formula to have peace and tranquility in the family. According to Ellen G. White, 1880 Materials, page 65, Take Jesus home to your hearts, to your houses, and present him to your neighbors. Let your families, your children, see the sweet grace of Christ at work in your hearts and exemplified in your characters. Farther in Adventist Hall 995, Jesus wants to see happy marriages, happy firesides. And King David also continued to say, except the Lord of hosts will build the house, the builder's labor is in vain. We can see here that Jesus Christ must be the first and must be the center of every family. Adventist Home 37, paragraph 4. The first work of Christians is to be united in the family. Then the work is to extend to their neighbors, nigh and afar off. Those who have received light are to let the light shine forth in clear rays. Their words, fragrant with the love of Christ, are to be a savor of life unto life. One of the best examples of unity in the family was the family of Noah. In the midst of wickedness in the antediluvian world, only the family of Noah was found to be righteous. In Genesis 6, 5 and 6, it is describing how wicked were the people living during the antediluvian world. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made 
man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both men and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it repented me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Verse 13 and 14. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood, rooms that thou, that thou shalt make in the ark, and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. We see here that of all the people in the Antediluvian world, only the family of Noah was found to be righteous in the sight of God. Catholic and Courage 36, paragraph 4. The descendants of Seth were called the sons of God, the descendants of Cain, the sons of men. As the sons of God mingled with the sons of men, they became corrupt and by intermarriage with them lost through the influence of their wives, their peculiar holy character, but there were a few that did righteousness who learned and fear and honored their Creator. Noah and his family were among the righteous few. We can see here that even how much wicked the people living in the antediluvian world, only Noah and his children were found to be faithful in the sight of God. So upon the command of the Lord to build the ark, it was amazing how the members of the family of Noah were working together to build the ark from beginning to the end. And by their faithfulness, they attracted others to help to build the ark. When the ark was almost finished and completed, Noah invited everyone to enter the ark and giving more attention to those who help building it. However, only his family made a wise decision to enter therein. Let us see how the Lord sent the water in the planet Earth during the time. Genesis 7, 11, and 12. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the seventh day of the month, the same day where all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of all heaven were open. And the rain was upon the earth forty days and forty nights. In the selfsame day entered Noah and Shem and Ham and Japheth, the sons of Noah and Noah's wife and the three wives of his sons with them into the ark. You see here that the united faithfulness of the whole family had saved them from the eternal ruin of the flood. During the plagues of Egypt, none of the family of the Israelites were affected. When they spent the last night in Egypt, when the firstborn of the Egyptians were killed, the Israelites family became a beacon of hope to many Egyptians. Let us see how Exodus 12 to 1 onwards were explaining about this situation. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. And ye shall take a bunch of high soap and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two sides posts 
with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out at the door of his house until this, until the morning. Verse 23, For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians, and when he seed the blood upon the lintel and the two sides of the posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you. In heavenly, heavenly places 150 paragraph 3, when the destroying angel was about to pass through the land of Egypt, and smite the firstborn of both men and beasts, the Israelites were directed to bring their children into the house with them, and to strike the doorpost with the blood, and none were to go out of the house, for all that were found among the Egyptians will be destroyed with them. It is interesting to note how the Israelites, parents, and children were cooperating in obeying the Word of God. None of them went out during the temporary quarantine that was declared by the Lord during that night. There were quite a number of the Egyptians who were led to acknowledge by the manifestations of the signs and wonders shown in Egypt. They entreated to be permitted to come to the houses of the Israelites with their families upon that fearful night. It means that the families who obeyed faithfully to the command of the Lord, they radiate a beacon of hope not only to their families, as well as to the families, to the different families of the Egyptians. And they ask the Israelites that they can come to their houses for safety during that night. And it was more amazing because in the following morning, when they were departing out of Egypt, many of the Egyptians were convinced that the Israelites were really the chosen people of God, and they decided to join with them in their exodus out of Egypt, going to the Promised Land. This is an example how a faithful family will radiate a beacon of hope to the suffering community and will be protected by God in many dangerous pestilences. Another inspiring example was the faithful family of Joshua. In the time of Joshua, many Israelites were secretly worshipping idols. Joshua knew that a half-hearted Christian service to God will not be acceptable unto the Lord. He made a very strong yet touching and persuasive appeals to all the fathers of Israel to make a wise decision. Let us read Joshua 24, 24 verse 14. Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Notice how persuasive and very conti contagious was the decision of Joshua when he said, But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. 
the people in unison answered to Joshua positively. In verse 16 and 17, in Joshua chapter 24, it says, And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For the Lord our God, He it is that brought us up and our fathers out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, and which did those great signs in our sight, and preserved us in all the way wherein we went, and among all the people through whom we passed. And the inspiration of the Spirit of Prophecy, Signs of the Times, April 8, 8 and 86, paragraph 4, says, After the death of Moses, Joshua was the leader of Israel, but notwithstanding his national burdens, he could not forget the duties which rested upon him in regard to his own family. He inquires of the people whether they will serve the Lord fully and keep all his commandments. And then he declares emphatically, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. This should be the language of every father and mother in our day. Father, it says in paragraph 14, We now have the privilege of deciding whether we will be numbered with the servants of Christ or the servants of Satan. And in every day we show by our conduct or service we have chosen if you are wise, we shall decide as the Joshua. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Another family that radiates hope to its inmates as well as to their community was the family of Abraham. The Lord commanded Abraham to leave his family in order for him and his family can follow faithfully all the desires of the Lord. Let us see how the Lord described Abraham's method in leading his family. In Genesis chapter 8, verse 18, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him, for I know him that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. In Conflict and Courage 49, paragraph 2, the life of Abraham, the friend of God, was signalized by a strict regard for the word of the Lord. He cultivated home religion, the fear of God pervaded his household. He was the priest of his home. He looked upon his family as a sacred trust. His household numbered more than a thousand souls. Had he and he directed them all, parents and children, to the divine sovereign. We can see here that Abraham, even how many persons in his surroundings, in his control, still he can manage it faithfully unto the Lord. Imagine more than 1,000 souls in his household. It's not easy to control. But by the way, Abraham was so faithful. Even the Lord said that Abraham will command his children and his household after the Lord. Now in Conflict and Courage 49, paragraph 2 and 3, he suffered no parental oppression on the one hand or filial disobedience on the other by the combined influence of, the, of love and justice. He ruled his household in the fear of God and the Lord bore witness to his faithfulness. Abraham would not only give right instruction 
but he would maintain the authority of just and righteous laws. You see here, my beloved friends, the model of parenting that Abraham was using is very worthy to imitate. He was guiding his family by combination of the influence of love and justice. In other words, he is a balanced father, not tolerant, not abusive, but he is a good father. By combining between love and justice, you can roll your family in the fear of God. Everyone in the family gave their attention, gave their subordination into Abraham because he loved them so much and also control if they commit mistakes. In other words, that he suffered no parental oppression in one hand, but also he will not suffer filial disobedience in the other hand. That is the meaning of combination of love and justice in the model of his parenting. Child Guidance 18, paragraph 4. Abraham was called the father of the faithful. Among the things that made him a remarkable example of godliness was the strict regard that in his home he paid to the commands of God. He cultivated home religion. He who sees the education given in every home and who measures the influence of his education said, I know him that he will command his children and his household after him, and he shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment. So whenever Abraham sojourned, he will always build an altar to offer sacrifice unto the Lord every morning as well as every evening. As soon as he will depart from that place, the people living in that area will always exclaim and be reminded that here Abraham and his family once live a people who serve Jehovah. Thus, they are radiating the knowledge of Jehovah wherever they go. The story of Zacchaeus brings a vivid lesson that when the father is converted, he will also radiate a beacon of hope to his family. When the Lord Jesus was incarnated to do his work, he preached the gospel of the heavenly kingdom everywhere. He healed the sick, cast out demons, and performed many miracles, causing a sensation throughout the entire Jewish state. Those who loved the truth, thirsted and hungered for righteousness, all followed the Lord, such as Peter, James, and John, and so on. Seeing that the Jewish chief priests, scribes, and Pharisees were afraid that if all the ordinary folks followed the Lord, then no one would follow them. In order to protect their own stat status and livelihoods, they slandered and condemned the Lord Jesus, saying that he relied on the chief of the devils, Belzebub, to cast out demons. So these are the slander and condemnation of the priests, of the Sadducees, and of the Pharisees. This caused many people to be deceived by their rumor and be inhibited by their status and power with the result that they didn't dare to follow the Lord Jesus. However, Zacchaeus, though he was the chief among the publicans, 
of the city of Jericho, and that time was reckoned to be a government official. He didn't advocate status and power, nor was he deceived or influenced by the rumor when he heard that Jesus was about to come to Jericho. He let go of his official position and status and only wanted to know the Lord Jesus. So, when Jesus entered Jericho, he was eager to see Jesus, but he couldn't because there were many people and he was sure enough to see Jesus. Then, regardless of others laughing and others gossiping about him, he climbed up to the sycamore tree to see the Lord while passing by. After seeing him, the Lord Jesus said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at your house. Therefore Zacchaeus received the Lord Jesus joyfully. In Luke 19 verse 8 it says, And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. In verses 9 and 10, And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house, for as much as he also is the son of Abraham, for the son of man is come to seek and save that which was lost. Complete and Courage 302 paragraph 5 it says, To Zacchaeus the Savior said, This day is salvation come to this house. Not only was Zacchaeus himself blessed, but also his household with him. They had been shut out from the synagogue by the contempt of rabbis and worshippers. But now the most favored household in all Jericho, they gathered into their own home about the divine teacher and heard for themselves the word of life. It was amazing that salvation did not come only for Zacchaeus, but also for his family. A converted parent also will reject beacon of hope to every member in his household. As the family of Zacchaeus united with him in receiving Jesus Christ as their Savior, they become also a beacon of hope to their community. So, my beloved friends, as we had studied from the experience of Noah and the experience of the Passover night, in the experience of Joshua, in the experience of Abraham, and in the experience of Zacchaeus. We can see that the secret of success and preservation of the lives of the people in the midst of pestilences is unity in Christ. So the question is, what is the secret in obtaining family unity so that we can kindle hope to others wherever we go? In Adventist Home 179, paragraph 1, the cause of division and discord in the families and in the church is separation from Christ. To come near to Christ is to come near to one another. The secret of true unity in the church and in the family is not diplomacy, not management, but union with Christ. So here we can see, my beloved friends, that if you want to become a beacon of light and hope to others, there must be a, un a unity among the family. And in order to have unity in the family, there must be 
unity in Christ. Bring to Jesus into your home. If heaven is a good place, why not make home a little heaven below? So if you want to live in heaven happily, you should try to live happily here below. Make your home a little heaven down here. Many families committed a great error upon the notion that money can answer everything and that can make them happy. Yes, money can buy bed but not sleep. Money can buy medicine but not cure. Money can buy bread but not satisfaction. Money can buy a house but not a home. Money can buy almost everything but not happiness. Who can only bring happiness in every home? Adventist Home 24 Only the presence of Christ can bring happiness to men and women. The home then becomes an Eden of bliss. The family a beautiful symbol of the heavenly family. May the Lord bless our families around the world as we are preparing to face that fearful events that is so near at hand. Thank you and may the Lord bless you.